you know what? You also look good in front of yourself because now you feel like, oh, I did a good introduction. That was nice. So let me go ahead. It's my time to ask some questions related to my medical understanding. So you're going to go ahead and walk into, I mean, talk to her and say, okay, so some people can be easily, I mean, can easily put their words. How may I help you today? What brought you in today? Or what, how, what can, um, how, how can I, what can I do for you today? But that's a very simple question. You can ask it that way as well. And I don't have no problem with you asking it if you feel comfortable with it. That's great. But if you don't feel and you want to make yourself look a little bit more professional, you say, okay, so I'm caring. You can just say, Mrs. Anderson, so I read your chart and you reported some shortness of breath. Is that correct? All right. Can you elaborate a little bit more about it to me? Well, this is the place where a lot of students have kind of two, two questions they ask. They say, oh, okay, so I read your chart and uh, it says that you're having some shortness of breath. Okay, is that right? Oh, yes, doctor, I'm having the shortness of bread and I'm trying to explain. I'm about to start explaining. Uh, I'm having some shortness of bread and this and that. Like, you know, I feel like uncomfortable and this and that. And you're like, okay, so, all right. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? What? I just spoke about you in, like my whole shortness of bread now. You made it, again, you give me an opportunity to speak now. You should not do that. So do not say like so, a question where you can allow her to talk and then again you have to ask her again, what do you mean? So just put it in a way that you just got to give her one opportunity for an open-ended question. The best way would be if you don't know how to put this on, just say, how may I help you today? That's the best way. Just keep it shortcut and keep it simple. But if you know or you're a little bit good in English, your English is a little bit great or you want to look a little nicer, you say, Mrs. Anderson, I read your chart and you have reported some shortness of breath. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? You see, I'm not just saying, oh, is that okay? Or can you tell me this? And then I come back again. I just straight up, I mentioned to her saying that, hey, listen, I already cared about you before. I already read about you before that you reported shortness of breath. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? If she says, no, doctor, I wasn't having shortness of breath, then you understand that she didn't have it. But at least you telling her that, it makes her feel like, oh, oh this doctor already knows what I, she read the chief complaint really well about me. So it's okay if you ask it this way, as I said, or you don't ask it this way. But personally, me, if I had to walk as a doctor, I want to make sure I tell my patient that I know you're already coming here for a complaint of this. So I know about you. I already have some information. But if you don't feel comfortable that way, as I said, just say, how may I help you? What can I do for you today? That's great. You're still good. And this is for the students who are very panicking too fast and they kind of lose their like their uh, words a little bit. They, can, they can't express their words very well. Just say, how may I help you? You're not going to lose any marks. Trust me. And then you go ahead, you let the patient to speak as much as they can. Let them speak their heart out and whatever they want to say. And... Just make it feel comfortable about it. And you know what? Let them just say whatever. Just say, okay, okay, I see. That's all. The first thing after every single case that you have to talk, I mean, do is to empathize with the patient. Now, this is so important that I have to put, I put it as in like a red, uh, basically color to make sure that if you forget this, you can look a little bad in front of the patient. Because the fact is, if I tell you a chief complaint that I have a headache and you don't get like, you just say, oh, okay, so when did this start it? That looks a little bit bad because you didn't even care about my complaint. It puts you down in a way that the patient starts to feel a little bit like, I mean, if these SPs are very experienced and that they've been told that you should look for these kind of stuff and you could be nice to them if they were nice to you. So if you go to them and then you just say, oh, okay. Uh, some students say, for example, let's say if someone has shortness of breath, they'll say, oh, that must be frustrating. Oh, that must be very, like, you know, hard to go through. Oh, I understand. Yeah, it's very tough. No, you don't understand or you can't explain to him or you can't. Uh, it's not frustrating. It's nothing. It is just that you don't know anything about how she feels like. So instead of that, instead of saying all these other words, oh, this must be very tough, this must be very hard, this must be very, like, frustrating, this must be this, just tell her nicely, Mrs. Anderson, I'm really sorry to hear what you've been going through. And I will make sure that I do my best to, make, to find out what's the underlying cause behind your condition. All right? Rest assured. That's good. 
you see how easily this can be and this can be said for every single chief complaint i'm really sorry to hear what you have been going through i will do my best to make sure that we can come up with a understand we'll come up with an understanding of what's the underlying cause of your condition today okay rest assured and that makes you look a professional as well as caring as well as a good empathizer you get your marks you get your confidence back and you get the patient back because the patient now starts to like that how you care about her right okay so that's important as i said every chief complaint after every chief complaint empathize very relaxedly don't rush this part take your time to empathize with her nicely even if you have to become an actor an actress or an actress so just keep yourself very 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 relaxed on this part okay don't rush it next is basically for example okay so let's see i'm gonna move this because if i send you guys this then it's going to become confusing for you that what is partial and all these men but that's a characterization of one of the cases um so what happens next? What is according to you guys characterization? A lot of people have this trouble within this part and they really, really have no idea what is going on. Honestly, when I told you, for example, about that case of forgetfulness, right? Uh, the, and the doctor that had a mock with me literally just ran through. He didn't even care about what I forget and what I don't forget, right? I told him I have forgetfulness and stuff like that. And he was literally just going through it. And I don't blame him because I think he wasn't he wasn't paying attention to his template that first I have to make sure that am I understanding this forgetfulness correctly or no? Because this forgetfulness could be just temporarily or it could be due to like uh, um, basically current conditions, not past memory. It could be just recent memory and recent memory has different problems. It could be due to specific drugs. It could be due to a trauma. It could be some sort of hemorrhage in the brain or something like that. But a chronic memory loss as well from long term ago, long time ago, uh, both combination of both can be also a chronic condition like Alzheimer's. It could be Lewy body dementia. It could be this, that, whatever, right? So we don't know. Uh, so what happens is that you have to know, like this is the part where you have to kind of figure yourself for yourself out that there's no more talking. The patient's not gonna talk at all and you're not gonna allow her to talk at all. If you're gonna allow your patient to talk more, it's gonna waste your time, number one. Number two, uh, she wouldn't still give you the answer because she's gonna say the same thing over and over again. Number three, uh, it's better for you to make sure that you confirm what's going on, right? Uh, so let's put it this way. If someone had shortness of breath, how would someone characterize shortness of breath? The word characterization means clarification. That's what I mean. Clarification, okay? Clarification of your mm, chief complaint. Like, let's say some, the patient comes to me and he says, I'm short of breath. Oh, I see. I'm sorry to hear that, Mrs. Johnson. Uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, I will do my best to find out what's the underlying cause behind your condition. But um, I just wanted to um, ask you something, Mr. Johnson. When you say you're short of breath, do you mean you have trouble breathing in, trouble breathing out, or you have both trouble breathing in or out? Then the patient's going to be like, well, doctor, I'm, I don't really know, but I think I'm, I can't breathe in or out. At least it makes you feel comfortable now, right? Because if someone having trouble breathing in, then of course we know there's there's some sort of obstruction, external obstruction from the mouth, from the oropharynx or the, uh, to the bronchioles or somewhere like that. If they have trouble breathing, sorry, breathing in, that's when the problem. When they have trouble breathing out, it's either COPD, asthma related condition or bronchoconstriction, right? If they have breathing in and out, it means that there's some sort of parenchymal issue like the alveolar must be full out of like, you know, water or something that they can't exchange at all. So it helps you kind of understand it, but I'm not saying that it will give you the 100% diagnosis, but at least it will help you, right? To figure out, hey, okay, I'm dealing with this guy who's having short trouble breathing in, that's all. Or it could be just like I'm having like, um, for example, panic attack patient, right? Breathlessness. Breathlessness is not the same thing as shortness of um, breath for patient with panic attack. They just feel like because their heart rate is so fast, they feel like they're running out of breath. That's what it is. So basically this patient could be hyperventilating. So you got to say, what do you mean by shortness of breath? Are you having increased uh, breathing? Are you having decreased breathing? Or are you having no uh, ability to breathe at all? 
right? You just keep yourself focused on what you're asking. Let's say this was seizure. I don't even care about if I have to ask a thousand differentials about seizure, but do I really know what kind of seizure is this lady talking to me about, right? So I have to make sure when I say, when you say seizure, Mrs. Johnson, uh, is this, do you mean shaking of your body just in a specific area or is it all over your body? Okay, it's all over my body, doctor. Okay. And uh, what about, um, is it complex or is it simple, right? Now you're gonna have to understand, well, did you lose consciousness? All right. And what about, um, have you had consciousness or not? no loss of consciousness, that's it. So this is two questions and I'm fig I figured out my seizure. Later on, I can go ahead and ask as many questions about my differential diagnosis, a pre-seizure, post-seizure questions and all that thing. But at least initially, I just want to make sure that what kind of seizure is she having right now? That's all that matters to me. I don't really care if she's if the medications or electrolytes are the reason for her seizure. That's not my concern because I want to follow step by step. And when I get to my steps down, everything will come in front of me. I don't have to talk to her, like worry about it so much by asking all the questions about differentials in characterization. So this is why if you practice this way, it will help you kind of achieve your goal of every case walking through like this and it will become much easier for you when you go to the exam. And in the exam, as I said, you can have as many different as cases as possible present but if you continue to follow your template, I promise you, all you have to do is just go to your differentials and ask questions, and that's only a specific area, okay? So the rest will be the same thing for the whole case, any cases. The timing will be asked the same way, the characterization will be asked the same way, as con constitution, symptoms, past medical history, everything will be asked the same way for every case. But just your differential part is gonna be the difference in the whole template. So anyways, let's go for characterization, as I said, is clarification. Now, another thing is, let's say some people do not know how to characterize, right? Uh, and they have trouble understanding or explaining themselves to the patient, say, hey, you know what, what do you mean by hearing loss? Do you have hearing loss on one side or both sides? Do you have hearing loss to the loud or to the low voice? They might not be able to come up with that kind of uh, clarification, right? So the best for them is to just go and say, hey, you know what? What makes your hearing loss better? And what makes it worse? Now, this at least also gives me a hope again that um, I can find out a little bit about my chief complaint that, oh, okay, if um, shortness of breath is alleviated by uh, basically by resting, Oh, it could be related to the basically some sort of like, you know, a heart failure. If the shortness of breath is not related to the resting and it's still short of breath, it could be more related to the lung conditions or it might not be asthma or it might be something very acutely that's going to cause that. Or so at least it will give you an idea of what your chief complaint is trying to talk to you. Right. And it's an, it's a mark as well. So don't take it like, Oh, it doesn't matter. Why should I ask this? No, this is your mark in the, and that, um, rubric there's a check mark for every question okay so you ask these questions you're getting marked for each one of them and in the end when you come out you feel confident to say that you know what i asked the most important questions that i needed to if i made any mistakes small little mistakes in my differentials and things like that well i just tried my best but at least i asked the most important question and that was important it was like the general questions basically about every single case so just ask what makes it better, what makes it worse. If you don't know how to characterize or clarify your chief complaint, just keep that in mind, all right? Next, what happens is this is for general internal medicine cases that has no mnemonics to it. That's why we have to characterize them for ourselves. But if it's pain or fluids, any kind of fluids, for example, vomiting, hemoptysis, for example, hemorrhage, urinary problems, diarrhea, and stuff like that, you ask your COCA plus B and AA. AA means aggravating, what makes it better and what makes it worse, okay? So it means coca plus B. Remember, color, odor, consistency, amount, and blood. And then what makes it better, what makes it worse. And then PQRST is for pain, what makes it better, what makes it worse. Pain, position, quality, radiation. I had a student also that who was, he's a very good doctor, and he starts to say, like, when he goes to ask questions, 
he's not so straight up with the questions. He puts his questions forward in a way that he says, oh, do you have some radiation of your pain? Uh, oh, is it to be to your legs or can it be to your like, you know, groin or can it be to your back? He just starts to say it a little bit more detailed to help me out as a patient, but he's wasting and eating his own chunk of time. So all he has to do is just say, Was, is there any radiation of this pain? That's all. He doesn't have to mention all these things because he's eating. So when you ask your questions, ask it bluntly and sharply. Don't try to, as he said himself, beat around the bushes. That's not gonna help you. You're eating your own time. Say, okay, Mr. Johnson, where's the position? Point to the position for me, please. All right, what's the quality of the pain? Is it sharp, dull, what kind of pain? All right, on a severity of one to 10, uh, how much would you rate this? All right, uh, one being least, 10 being the most, right? And where is, specifically is there any timing for this that comes on? Not really, doctor. Okay, great. What makes it better? What makes it worse? Move on. Don't try to stick too much around and go too deep into these questions a little bit. Just bluntly and sharply, but in a nice way. This is why you introduce yourself so professional, right? This is why you start to come in nice and empathizer initially. So later you can go sharp and straight up. You don't have to worry about being scared or saying like a little bit more nicer and this and that. No, I have done enough to show myself that I'm a good professional. I'm communicating well enough with you. I'm professional enough. I don't have to beat around the bushes by these questions, explaining you these questions. If you don't know the meaning of these questions,